R3F can make the process of creating 3D scenes in React and Next.js pretty easy. And one of the best extensions for it is the UI Kit, which lets you build 3D UI that can interact with your scene. In this video, we'll build a web app with Next.js that uses R3F and UIKit, and a live demo alongside the GitHub repository for the code will be down in the description. Let's first create a new Next.js app with default settings, install the necessary dependencies for running R3F and UIKit, and run npm run dev to start our local host server, which will be in port 3000. With that done, let's clean up the code on our page.tsx file and import our R3F scene, which we'll create after. Now for the R3F code, let's create a new file called 3Scene in a new folder called Components and set up a basic Hello World scene in R3F, which should give you something like this. Let's then create a setup for the scene. In this demo, we'll have an iPhone that has UI for settings in it that will change the background color of the scene and a string for a 3D text in the background. The model for the iPhone will be in the GitHub repository as well. So we'll need to first load this model and a texture for the screen, which I've placed in the public folder. And to do so, we will need a few hooks from React, mainly use state to keep the state of the screen material, which will change soon. Use layout effect to do the initial setup pre-render and use effect to do any changes to the material if our background color changes. And also some hooks from R3F, use loader to load the texture and use GLTF to load the model. Also, don't forget to include use client so that our scene can be rendered on the client side. Now, in the iPhone model component, we load the texture and the model and set up our state for the screen material. We also need a reset material function to change the material based on the background color prop. Then we use use layout effect, which will run pre-render, to set up the material and apply the texture to the screen part of the model. Finally, we use use effect to change the material when the background color changes. Then we just return a primitive, which is a component from R3F. Now that we have a phone model, let's make a list of colors which we'll use in a state that we will pass to our iPhone model. We'll also add some ambient light, a background color, and an environment to which we can import from the DREI library so we can see our iPhone. And for the sake of making it nicer to explore our scene, we can add a camera controller. I won't go into details about how it works as that is not the aim of the video, but it just makes it so that you can go around the model and move the camera according to the mouse position. Now, the code and the result should look like this. If you're wondering where the center component came from, we imported it from DREI, and what it does is just align our model to be above the Y equals zero plane. With that done, let's add a 3D text and a state for the string of that text that we will change in our UI. You'll need a JSON file for the font, which will also be available in the GitHub repository. And finally, we are ready to create our UI. Let's first import the UI toolkit. I use require to avoid some Next.js errors, but you can also use the regular way of importing. So let's create the UI component and pass our state and set state function to it. I've also made the background color for the root component blue to see if everything is working correctly. Our scene should now look like this. With this all set up, we can now take an opportunity to see how the UI works in R3F. We always need a root component to start things with and every other possible component can only reside inside it. All components are considered flexbox elements and the way to interact with them is in the same fashion as with the Mantine UI library, mainly in that the CSS elements are just props in the component. So now let's create multiple buttons with the container component that when clicked will change the entire scene to be the same color. 
And finally, let's add an input that will change the string in our 3D text. That's basically it. I highly recommend that you check out the documentation. There are times when I felt lost with them or there is a trick that is not covered there. But generally speaking, they provide a good and straightforward way to interact with the libraries. The link for them will also be in the description. Thank you so much for watching. And if you reach this point of the video, I would recommend liking and subscribing as I'll be making more content like this in the future. And if you have any questions, you can join us on our Discord server where you can talk to me and others directly. Until next time, bye-bye.